الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعاصيهما فلا يضر الا لنفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الذين امنوا ادخلوا في السلم كافه ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان انه لكم عدو مبين indeed the path that has been shown by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the path that takes every human being to success inna hudallahi huwal huda and this is the message that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given throughout uh, the centuries uh, throughout the prophets throughout the history that those who follow his path indeed are the one who are successful in this life and the life we are after but the message was given in different languages in different environment in different conditions to different people but the essence of the message has always been the same inna huwallahi wal huda the guidance is the guidance that comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the prophet preserved that message and for that he is described as rahmatul lil alamin because he is the only prophet in the history of all the prophets who ensured that the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not left to people to decide and determine what is right and what is wrong and that is what is basically we remind ourselves when we say that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ma arsalna fa illa rahmatan lil alamin that he is the one who has been sent in the mercy to the world he reminded us on the authority of the quran very clearly that a day will come when each one of us will leave this world and a day will come when we will all be raised to once again to be held accountable to everything that we say and do in this world and he also reminded us that uh, those who are muttaqin who are uh, the, the uh, pious people who are cut conscious would indeed succeed in this life <clears throat> today is the first of uh, January of 2021 a new year a new month and we all uh, wished each other happy new year last night and many this morning but a question should be asked what is new in this year the sun is the same the moon is the same the conditions that we have been living is the same what has been new and what is there to celebrate let us go back to the quran to find the the, the significance of time the significance of uh, <clears throat> the alternation of days and night in the life of humanity in the life of each individual very simply quran says wal asr by the time inna al-insana la fi khusr human being is in a state of loss illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihah except those who have conviction and those substantiate their actions with their convictions let us focus on this one in the context of happy new year that we say or the coming of new years as we remind us every year the quran is very specific that the human beings 
unless they remain focused on certain objectives, unless they remain focused on certain goals in their life, unless they are committed to certain uh, things that would have any meaning in their life and in the lives of others, they would not be able to make use of that time and they would not be able to fulfill the abilities that God has endowed them with and they would not be able to achieve what Allah would otherwise want them to achieve. Human beings are always in a state of loss, whether they lived in 1950s mm -hmm. or 670 or 630 or whatever, unless they had faith. The Quran says that faith, but we would understand what does it mean. And good or pious or good deeds, we will also explain what they are. But essentially, the Quran is also telling us that uh, if you want to change, if you want to succeed in this life, you have to be respectful to the time that has been given to you in this life. You have come here for a limited time. That each one will leave this world after a certain period of time. And that the time that they have in between life and death is the opportunity that they have to basically their life in the best possible manner that they can. So what the Quran is essentially is telling us in modern language that we should manage our time. That the process of organizing and planning, how should we organize our time? is what we call the time management. Walasr, by the time. Take, make sure that you understand the importance of that time. Make sure that you would uh, take care of the time that has been given to you. We all have been given 24 hours. But some people achieve more than others. Why do they do that? Is it because they have some extra qualities? No, because they manage their time properly. Because if we don't manage our time, our efficiency and our productivity is low. Our reputation becomes low. We get a lot of stress. We lose a lot of opportunities and advancement that may come to our life. That uh, we uh, basically missed our deadlines. We become inefficient in our work. We become poor in our work quality. And we basically keep on complaining about things that are happening around us. So in that particular respect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that those people who have believed um, iman. What is faith? Faith is assurance to oneself that the idea that one believes would indeed lead to results that are desired for certain specific goals. So what essentially is, is being said here, that if you want to make use of your time properly, you have to set goals properly. In all aspects of life, Life is an intertwined uh, whole, whole. It is not in separates. It is not parts. It is a whole entity. And one major goal impacts everything except in, uh, uh, in our life. If we believe that our goal is to ensure that we follow a life based on the guidance that God has given, then our goals will be set accordingly. We'll have to agree on certain things. We'll have to basically reject certain things. We'll have to accept certain things. We have to discard certain things. So, those who have faith. Now, there are people who have faith 
in the money. There are people who have faith in power. There are people who have faith in other things. For Muslims, we have faith in the divine guidance. That why we have faith in the divine guidance? Because we believe that the divine is the one who ensures that the interests of each and every of his creation are taken care of. And if when we follow those guidance, we also ensure that we are standing for the rights and for the welfare and for the well-being of each and everything that exists in this universe, whether it is the human beings or it is the natural or the physical world. So we have to set our goals according to that belief system. Now, once we have that uh, belief system, and this is what is emerging from what we call There are seven points that are coming from that. The first is you have to have that goal. You have to have that faith. You have, and faith is based on your own, uh, 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 what you call word view. This is the word that you want to live. You want to live a world where people live peacefully. You want to live in a world where people live lovingly. You want to live in a world where people are not dependent on each other. You are. You want to live in a world where people are happy. You want to live in a world where people are fearless and use fullest their ability that God has given them. So in that is what our flame, very framework and our belief is that only God can give us that kind of guidance, then certainly we set our goals. How should we achieve that? And how do we achieve those goals? When we prioritize. There are a hundred tasks that come to us, our mind, that this may be good, this may be good, but we have to prioritize that which one would take us to the uh, the, the destination quickly and properly. We have to study, and that means we have to study everything that we are doing, that what is important for us. So we have to prioritize. And once we have this priority, then we have to make sure that uh, we set a time to achieve those priorities. Lafi khusr. We will all remain in a state of loss if we do not prioritize and if we do not set a timetable. For instance, take, take the example of the prayers. We have been asked to pray at a specific time. And there is a reason for that. And the reason is that from in the busy uh, you know, schedule that we have, we should take break to basically take get us out of the stress and focus on our relationship with God to seek his help and to basically be at a situation where we are communicating with ourselves and our Lord looking at everything that happened and that are going to happen and then relaxing in a manner that would give us more energy to go forward and there are specific times for that if we don't fulfill those kind of uh, uh, prayers on their scheduled time, maybe, yes, once a while, you you know, we might find ourselves uh, busy in different kind of things and we may not be able to take care of the time properly. But in general, if we do not fulfill, then certainly uh, we will not get the kind of uh, benefit that otherwise would come from following that schedule. So we have to have... Uh, belief, we have to have goals, we have to have priorities, we have to have uh, uh, set a time, uh, you know, to, to achieve whatever we want to achieve. And I, as I mentioned earlier, that we have to take the break in terms of doing things when we, we are doing things. Even in the prayers, we are asked to take breaks. The five daily prayers. We don't pray all those five one after another. We take breaks, and those breaks are primarily to reinvigorate and re-energize ourselves. And then what happens is we organize ourselves. Working on time and organization is different in the sense that when we basically even have allocated time for a specific task, then we organize ourselves that take, again to take the example of the prayers that what should we decide first? What kind of 
verses that we should remind ourselves, read to, to remind ourselves the reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us or they told us. Because if we focus on certain verses that we understand and that have a moral and practical message for us and we understand that message, then repeating them would reinforce our resolve to do those things. For instance, if we for take the example that we recite in the verse, Walas inna insana lafiqus. And if we are reciting that verse while thinking about the message that is being communicated, then we would become more aware of the time that we have. We would become more aware of the energy that we have. We would become more aware of the realities around us. And what is the sixth thing? Is that while doing all those kind of things, lafi khusr again, why do we become khusr? Why do we lose things? Because we start giving focus to non-essential things and non-essential tasks. So in the prayers, we avoid doing that. You know, even if the people come in the inside the masjid and say salam, we don't respond because we are praying non-essential thing even though salam is very important but we we basically are focused on a task so similarly in our life we also focus on things that are essentials and we do not basically uh, uh, give priorities to those things that are non-essential and then lastly that everything that we are doing we should plan ahead so this is what walasr means basically that setting our goals, having faith and belief and prioritizing, uh, you know, uh, setting a time, taking uh, breaks, uh, organizing ourselves, removing non-essential things and planning ahead. And now let's come to the other aspect and that is Now usually the translation that is given in our English uh, versions of the Quranic uh, translation is those who do good deeds. Don't, those who do pious deeds. In fact, the word Saleh does not necessarily mean pious only. It means acts that are essential to achieve a task. For instance, if a surgery has to be performed. And if you put the instruments in the hands of a pious person who doesn't know anything about physical anatomy or the body itself, he would not be able to perform any surgery no matter how pious that individual is. So Amale Saleh means actions that are in relation to the goals, to the belief system, to the ideas, to the objective that one has set for oneself. And again, I'm going back to the prayer that when I have said that I would be offering five daily prayers, and one of the important things would be that I offer those prayers by understanding what I am reading in those prayers. I have to memorize certain things. If I don't memorize, I have to learn how to read either in Roman transliteration or in Arabic while standing or, you know, praying. And then I have to understand the meanings. And then I have to basically ensure that I select those passages that would remind me of the realities of the life and that would remind me and then guide me of the truth that is happening. All those things. So, amal saleh would mean an action that is in relation to things. It is not only about the piety. It is not only about how, how I, um, you know, uh, perfect uh, a per particular moral uh, guidance that has been given to me. It is that whatever task I have taken as part of the goals that I have set for myself, in fulfilling my responsibilities towards the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to make sure that I am 
fulfilling its fullest responsibilities and I am taking care of each and every aspect of that. So a person who is uh, in IT should have the best understanding of how the system works in order to fulfill his tasks as an IT person. Without that, it would be impossible. So that is the Amal Saleh. And what is that Amal Saleh should be based on? That Amal Saleh and that goal must ensure that the welfare of people is taken care of. That the truth is always given priority. And by truth means that the welfare and well-being of each and every human being and to ensure that in the process, if one across, come across roadblocks and obstacles, one should be patient and perseverance to withstand the challenges that one faces. So it is that formula that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us for time management. And reminding us that look at the human history and you would find that those people who use their time properly in the sequence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lent you, you have to basically be clear what you are believing in, what is required to achieve those beliefs, what kind of priorities are you going to give what kind of time you are going to allocate, what kind of breaks you will take to avoid the monotony, what kind of uh, obstacles or unnecessary and non-essential things that you want to avoid and how you are going to plan. Once you do that, you will indeed, illa you will be in the category of those people, illa lazina provided your actions are in proportions to the challenges that you have taken. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullahi li wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem wa khatam al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayuhu al-lazina amu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ghalim كما سليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الله مبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Now this uh, application of Surah Al-Asr in the context of managing our time, in the context of managing our resources, requires two things. The first is our own willpower and determination to do things. We are the ones who basically would do those things. No one else would do for us. We are the one who have to do it. And the second, we need the company of those people who would basically help us stay on the right path. We have fragile human beings. We are weak human beings sometimes. We do not... Uh, act based on rational thinking only. We sometimes act on emotions. We sometimes act on impulses. And what happens mm -hmm. when we have a group of people who are like-minded, who think like us? Then we get energized. We get solidarity from them. And that inspires us to stay the path to uh, maintain the course that we have taken. So these are the two things, that one's own determination and one's inspiration coming from one's family and one's friends. And certainly we'll handle this issue about the company that we should keep in a separate khutbah. But right now, let us focus on our own individual efforts uh, in terms of uh, being among those about whom the Quran says, Wal asr inna al insana la fi khusr. We do not want to be among those who are losers. And the best way is to organize ourselves, our time in a manner which is in line with our ultimate goal, that is to follow the divine guidance 
to ensure that the people are secure and to ensure that uh, the success is achieved with sabr. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he enables us to live a life based on the true teachings of the Quran. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab al-nar. Rabbana zalamna al-fasana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna la nakuna na mudu khasirin. Rabbana hablana min azbatina wa zurriyatina furata ayunin wa jahalna lil muttaqina imama. Aqimi salat inna salata tanhaan al-fahshai wal-munkar al-baghi. يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى على ما أولى وأهم وتمون. Oh, please.